What's happening everybody? Welcome back to Aquaporn. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about do-it-yourself CO2 reactors using the yeast method. Now I've seen a lot of misconceptions out on the net about finding that ultimate recipe that's going to make your uh, yeast last longer and your CO2 production last longer and uh, I want to kind of tell everybody that that's not what you should be thinking about when you set up a do-it-yourself CO2 yeast reactor. Now they're very important and they're very viable method of introducing CO2 into planted aquaria providing the necessary CO2 and carbon for uh, plant cell production. They're very good and uh, very easy to make and use. However, some people don't realize that if you make a, just a single bottle reactor and look for that holy grail of yeast recipes that's going to make your CO2 production last longer, you're going to run into some algae problems. And I'm not just talking like some green dust algae. I'm talking the nasty invasive algae like blackbeard, uh, staghorn, blanket algae, hair algae, algaes that are just going to be really difficult to get rid of. Now I made a little chart right here just to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. Now when you do, when you set up your CO2 reactor, your CO2 obviously is at zero and your, and your time is at the beginning. So what the yeast does is it consumes the sugars that you provide and basically pisses alcohol and farts CO2. Those are the byproducts of the yeast consumptions of the sugars. So you start at zero when you first start your reaction. Now that reaction just builds up to a peak and then it starts to fall off again. Now the dissolved parts per million you want in your tank is 30 parts per million. You want to keep, that's the line that is ultimate for production you're not, and you're not going to kill your fish. So when you're doing a single bottle reaction, it's just following this curve. It, the production is slowly increasing till it gets to the pinnacle or the climax point and then it starts to come down. Now with these algaes, these invasive algaes that you get, it's all about, or if you look it up, CO2 fluctuations or poor CO2. So when you start a single bottle reactor, you're going to get fluctuations all in these points here. You know, you're going to set it up and you're going to wait two, three weeks, or that holy grail recipe says that you can last four weeks before you have to change it. Well, you're going to spend a lot of time here on the downside and a lot of time here on the upside. Fluctuations in CO2 are one of the leading or main causes of these invasive algaes such as blackbeard, staghorn, and, uh, and alike. So I am here to advocate going to what I have, a two bottle system or even a three bottle system if your tank's bigger because these are pretty viable for tanks that are 40 gallons or less anything over 40 gallons I don't know if you're ever gonna make that 30 part per million you could but basically if you go to a two or three bottle system and you're changing a bottle every week you have better chance a better likelihood to reduce those fluctuations in co2 and to better illustrate that I made another little chart here for all you kitties out there so basically, like I said, you start out the one and it, the reaction grows, the consumption gets faster and faster until the alcohol is too much in the bottle and it starts killing your yeast and then that will start slowly coming down. So if you start one, one, your first bottle, and then a week later start your second bottle, so as this is in its pinnacle, the second bottle is starting to grow and the point is to dial it in to where your 30 parts per million stays relatively constant. So your first week you're up 
you start your second bottle while you're in the peak of the first and as that grows as the other as the first week is coming down the second bottle is coming up and they eventually cross in the center point here keeping your 30 parts per million pretty constant then as that's coming down on week two you start your next bottle and so on and so forth so that'll keep your co2 from fluctuating too much and keep you from getting those nasty invasive algaes because that's something that they don't tell you when you're thinking about adding co2 to your planted tanks and uh, I advocate adding co2 they're necessary building blocks for cell production in plants it makes your plants green healthy and grow really quickly even in low light setups I have uh, a two bottle system on both my tanks the lights off in the 12 gallon but this is the five gallon I diffuse the five gallon with a ceramic diffuser and then there's a ladder diffuser I don't know if I can get a shot there it is right there the ladder diffuser in my 12 gallon but the two bottle system is where to go now about these recipes that I'm finding on forums and these gurus with these magic recipes that are gonna last you a month garbage guys garbage I mean it will perhaps last a month but why do you really want that when you what all you want is a really fast reaction the faster you get to this point the better because then you can dial in when you have to put your bottles on to keep your 30 part per million line so just a basic sugar recipe is the best you know I have one liter bottles so I'm using one cup of sugar to a uh, half teaspoon of yeast only thing extra I add is a little bit of maple syrup to give it some color and when it get and to give it color that way I know when to change the bottle or what bottles next as you can see this bottle is a little bit lighter in color and this one is still kind of clear and dark from the maple syrup so this bottle is the next bottle to be changed because it's almost completely consumed and then this bottle is the newer bottle so you want a fast reaction just use a basic recipe keep it cheap keep it simple I've seen recipes out there with jello I've seen recipes out there with jello and rice claiming that oh you're gonna get a month out of your reaction when that's not what you want you don't want a reaction that's gonna be just a single curve and go up really super slow and then have the same peak because the alcohol is going to eventually start killing your yeast and then a real slow decline because that's when your algae is going to start what you want is a simple sugar recipe that's going to get the fastest reaction to this point so you want a real fast reaction to this point it'll hold the same amount of time and then start coming down then you start the second one with another fast reaction up to this point that's all I had to say because you know a lot of beginners out there I'm not one to tell people what to do or how to run their tanks but I think that this is information that people don't tell you about your do-it-yourself co2 if you have regulated co2 you can dial it in at 30 parts per million and keep it there forever but when you're doing the do-it-yourself with yeast it's important to know that the reaction starts low goes up to that peak and comes down so I hope this is helpful uh, I just don't want people to set up their bottle and then wonder why they're getting all these crazy algaes and the reason you're getting crazy algaes is because of the fluctuation in CO2 so until next time comment rate subscribe hopefully this is helpful have a great day everyone